welcome to an Eternity Ward Extra with Chris and Nick. And, well, to start with, we're going to be talking again about media, which we talked about last night. Two nights in a row, Nick. Two nights in a row. Part two. I think we've found, as we've done this podcast, often we just finish one and then we go, ah, oh, should have said this. Ah, oh, should have said that. Or, oh, I should have actually done my research. It's the same thing as what happens in any conversation you have with people, isn't it? Yeah. So a little bit of hindsight. And so we've just gone away after last night's discussion, you know, and it gave me a few things to think about and, and there's a few things I wish I'd articulated better and so on. So in the interests of us trying to share our perspective to the best of our ability, we're just going to have another conversation. That's what we always want. Yeah. So... You had some ideas, uh, like you went away and did some looking at stuff and and I thought about some stuff. Who wants to go first? Do we scissors, paper, rock it? What? It's paper, scissors, rock. <laughs> We're even arguing about that. I always argue with people about that. Yeah, well, mm-hmm. I, I don't mind. Um, so, like, the stuff I had to talk about, like, I was surprised last night that you didn't seem to think that the ABC was left-wing. You thought they were right down the middle as a centrist media organization and like i wasn't expecting that at all because i thought everyone (laughs) understands that the abc is left wing and so i didn't like you asked for some evidence and i was like well i don't have any bloody evidence because it's just (laughs) it's like you know what evidence do i have that the sun's yellow well it just is i mean except for when you go outside of the earth's atmosphere and then it's just white of course everyone knows that but yeah so i didn't have any evidence so i i thought oh I, i better go and find some i suppose so i I did that a little bit today, so I've got a couple of things. They're not massive things, but I think they are indicative of... of and you're wanting wanting to what? Just gauge my reaction? Yeah. To, yeah, just see what you think of them. You know, there's those YouTube video clips where people gauge the reaction of people to, to all sorts of things. There's a, oh, yeah. like Gogglebox? Yeah. Like, so should, should I be dramatic or something when you share this, this piece of news? Well, if you can get Biz to come down and watch with you... Then you could just go, Struth beers. <laughs> this guy's a flipping muppet. Just do that, and that'll be great viewing for everyone. Yep. All right. So, what did you go and look at? The most striking thing that I came across was something you mentioned um, as well. Like you mentioned that there was a survey done of it wasn't just of ABC journalists, but there was a survey done of journalists all across Australia to see their voting patterns, but. You know, one of the striking things that came out of that survey was that 41% of ABC journalists vote green. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, like that's that's mind-boggling to me. It's um, much more than the general if, if, population for sure, yeah. Well, what is it, like 9% or something about, vote yeah, green? Yeah, 10, in the, about 10. So yep. it's, yeah, so it's about four times the amount of the general population. So if that's not indicative of a left-wing bias, I don't know what it is. So, like, you've already seen that statistic, obviously, mm. because you came across it in the research. Yeah. So I told you that one, like, thinking that you'd like that one. Yeah. <laughs> I gave that up freely. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Here you go, Nick. <laughs> yeah, that's very kind of you. So, like, what do you make of that? But I still don't think that there is a left-wing bias. So how do I justify that when I look at yeah. those figures? I think that was done back in, like, 2007, that survey or something. Um, if you say so. But anyway... You know, it would still be relevant. The numbers might not be exactly the same because I know that that the ABC has also been hiring people from conservative media as part of, you know, a push to make sure that they're not seen as being left-wing biased. So they've got some (laughs) some radio presenters that they've sort of poached from conservative media over, you know, and stuff like that. Um, But how do I, how would I justify it anyway? Well, I mean, it certainly does give you more opportunity to be biased when you have more number of people that are 41% are Greens, uh, it was like, you know, 30% Labor, 30% Coalition sort of voters. It was around about those sort of numbers. And so I think I argued that with a right-wing presence within the organisation, that that should be able to hold the left-wing presence within check as such and, and not let them get away with too much. So you don't think there'd be any difference between having... 30% coalition, 70% left wing, and if it was flipped, it was 30% left wing and 70% coalition. That would make no difference. Well, you'd hope it would make no difference. Because, you know, the 
of the left wing people would be able to keep them in check. Is that what you're saying? Well, you, you'd hope it would make no difference. A bit. I also, I'd like to argue that you know how left are Labor really, though. You know as well, like <laughs> spoken like a true Green supporter. For Chris. someone who is over on the left on a lot of issues, I, I don't see them. You know, so it, it's weird that we just classify. You know the coalition is just they're just right you know the labor is left you know the greens are far left you know and that's that's a you know it can be an easy way to sum things up but you know i think a lot of labor positions are fairly conservative a lot of their policies are fairly conservative but i would still regardless of all that i, I have an argument i have an argument to what's make. your argument <laughs> uh, I am anyway, concentrating. Yes, I'm just, yes. you know, enjoying the compliments we're getting from Tommy saying that we're pretty with our beards. Right. But yes, sorry, go, Chris. Okay, I'll concentrate. so in one sense, it shouldn't matter how many left or right people are within an organisation because we spoke about the ABC having a like a collectist philosophy that they want to hold to journalistic integrity. They want to hold to, you know, impartiality. They They want to fearlessly investigate things and, you know, they want to do it for the interests of the Australian people, right? So just because there are more left or right-wing people within an organisation, there's, there's left and right-wing people within all sorts of organisations. It doesn't mean that that organisation is necessarily biased. And with all of the inquiries that were done on the ABC, finding that they're not biased, they're not going outside of their charter or outside of their you know, their responsibilities, then that's where I'm placing my data and saying they're not being biased, right? Now, yeah, okay, there's more left-wing people in there and we know that everyone is biased to some extent and that's going to have a bit of a sway. So I'm going to say, is the ABC more left than right? Sure, I might give you that, but I'm, I don't think it's in, in any way that is problematic to our democracy. It's small enough that it's not problematic to our democracy because I think they are trying to do the right thing and all the inquiries that have come and all of the, you know, people criticising them and trying to, and they're trying to keep themselves in check that I think they're doing as good a job as you could do with human beings being within an organisation. Like, can you see from a right-wing person's perspective that if they see an organisation that does lean left where 70% of the journalists are left-wing and it's funded by the taxpayer, like, that they would be upset with that? Yeah. Like, can you see that they would be upset with that? Yeah, I can, yeah. And justifiably or unjustifiably? Oh, they they definitely have reason to be concerned and to watch it like a hawk and to question it and, yeah, absolutely. But I don't think that that Mm. means that you call for it to be privatised or you call for it to be pulled to pieces, you know, I don't. I, yeah. I think that's an overreaction. Yeah. Yeah. So I might have said that a bit too strongly last night. Like I think I, I may have said it too strongly. Perhaps I'm not sure. Like I think best case scenario would be that the ABC sees that it does have a left wing bias and says we need to work hard at ensuring if we are going to be a independent down the centre media organisation, and that's our charter, being a publicly funded broadcaster. Mm that we're going to do our absolute best to make sure that we hire a a broad cross-section of journalists because everyone does have their biases and you you can't help that. Like, you can do your best. Like, I'm not saying that you should just, you know, not even try to contain your bias, but you can't as well. Like, you have to hold both of those things in contention at the same time. Like, you've got to be trying to be an independent journalist but also acknowledge that if we employ... 40% 40% Greens journalists and only 30% well, Coalition and 30% Labor, then that is going to affect the reporting that happens. Yeah, but you can't ask... Well, it's interesting. They've just employed people from... Well, from conservative media organisations, right? So, but you can't ask someone when you're employing them, who do you vote for? <laughs> you know, so... No, no, you can't. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, uh, it's a tough one. And it, but it's the same thing. I'm like going... What is it? Does the right want all of the left people out of the organisation? Do the left want all of the right people out of these organisations? Do atheists want all religious people out of politics? Do religious, you know, I'm like going, we have these things that are part of sort of our identity and part of our value systems and stuff that we sort of align ourselves with, rightly or wrongly at times. But um, 
it's there. It's we're we're all in this together. Yeah, we are. You know, we can't just wipe one side out. So yeah, but yeah. So like the right might want to just wipe out every left wing journalist. That's certainly not not what I want. Like I don't know where I stand these days. I don't know whether I'm left or I, I, like I don't think I'm right, but I'm all over the place politically. Mm. And so like I feel like the ABC failed me because I feel like it did indoctrinate me to a left wing point of view. And I think if they had been more balanced, I think I would have been more balanced. And I think I would have come to these conclusions a lot quicker and realised the flaws in my own logic a lot earlier it wouldn't have had to take the technological revolution where we're getting podcasts and youtube and i'm exposed to outside points of view i don't think it should have taken that technological revolution the abc should have been providing the broad cross-section from the start and i don't think they have been who's more broad though <laughs> than, than and and like what are their you what are like, their vested interests to to set you up in a way to be left-leaning you know that's it may be part of what comes out of that, you know, a human being is presenting a program and some of them goes into, you know, that program, but it's like that no one's trying to tell you <laughs> exactly who you should be. And they're, yeah. they're broad in the sense that they, that they cover things that lots of other commercial media organizations don't cover. They cover, you know, feminist issues and indigenous issues and um, <laughs> they're all left wing issues. Why are they left wing issues? I, I you don't to... see that feminist, like twenty first century feminism, is a left wing ideological position. Okay, so I worked on lots of community radio stations. You know, as I was growing up, you had to devote certain time, you know, to serve a more diverse Australian people, right? You had to, you had to have your religious programs and your your Spanish program, your, your Greek program, and so the ABC, because it devotes other time to to religion and to feminism and indigenous issues minority issues they have to do that it's part of their charter to be able to supply stuff to other people in australia that the mainstream media isn't supplying this stuff to that so they do give you a broad <laughs> i'm saying if you want broad that's broad they have to talk about the issues it doesn't yeah. mean they have to come at the issue from an one ideological viewpoint but they they have to okay so Okay. This leads into one of my other ones, Chris. Right. Yep. One of my other issues. So you're saying that they provide a broad cross section of issues that are ignored by the commercial media. Yep. I don't think that's true. I think they focus on left wing topics. Right. Let me give you another example. Okay. So recently, Sarah Ferguson from the Four Corners program interviewed Steve Bannon. And in the lead up, well, I don't know if it was in the lead up to that or afterwards, but a bunch of fellow ABC reporters got pissed that the ABC would be giving a platform to Steve Bannon. So Steve Bannon, for people that don't know, is the head of Breitbart, whatever the hell you would call Breitbart, online news organisation. Well, news might be putting it too strongly, well, but online... Well, they're alt-right. I guess they're a news organisation. They were sort of like, yeah. Yeah. Right at the beginning of the alt-right sort of movement. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and, and so he also worked for President Trump um, as, I think he was a chief strategist or something like that before Trump decided, you know, went from saying that he's the best dude ever to he's, you know, the worst traitor ever or something, the sort of stupid stuff that Trump says. Yeah, so I don't know how you can think that the ABC are right down the middle when on the rare occasion where they do interview someone from, like he's he's fairly far right mm -hmm. you know he's not a nazi but he's fairly far right i mean you know he, he worked for the president so it's not like he's that far right <laughs> but um okay go on so he's right wing more right wing than you're comfortable with i'm sure oh yeah but it's not like he's further right wing than sarah hansen young is left wing and like if they were to interview her it'd just be like yeah of course of course you interview her you know 40 percent of us voted for her Right, so they interviewed him and... Oh, okay. Do you want me to give you some quotes? If you want. I'd like to. All right. So one uh, ABC reporter, Osman Faruqi, 
said these people throwing half-baked ideas out there, and the people he's referring to were Lee Sales, Virginia Trioli, Sarah Ferguson, and someone neighbor. I don't know who that is. That's a producer of Four Corners. I don't know her first name, though, sorry. Um, they seem to have zero awareness of what it might be like to be one of the very few people of color journalists at the ABC watching the biggest names throw you and your people under the bus. Yeah, that's your ABC. Um, then another dude, oh, sorry, not dude, this one's a dudette, Sophie McNeil, said, my ABC colleague Janine Kalik offers a different perspective, blah, 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 and this is what Janine Kalik said. Tell me more about how we should give a bigger platform to neo-Nazis and suggest their cause is one of freedom of speech when we live in a time and a place where my... Hijab-wearing mother has been spit on, sworn at, refused service, and I get scared whenever she goes out on her own. Right. Shouldn't a centrist media organisation be... Like, that should just be expected, that they interview people from the left and the right and not get their knickers in a knot whenever they do do that? Yeah, well, I mean, okay, Sky News, they interviewed Blair Cottrell... He's the Aussie guy who heads up, what is it? Yeah, United Patriots Front and, and something else, you know. And uh, and there was a big furor about about them giving him airtime because he's been done for all sorts of offences. And, and so, so the question is, you know, I think they're arguing, why are we giving these people? Because these are, Steve Bannon's extreme alt-right. I don't, he's, he's basically a neo-Nazi. I don't understand how you think that he's okay. <laughs> To be interviewed. So you think he wants to kill He's a fascist. people of different minorities? Like, that's what Nazis did. You think he wants to kill people of different... I don't know what goes on. Uh, I don't know exactly races. what goes on in his head, but he's he's pushed a whole lot of very But you're calling him a Nazi. Ideology. He's pushed a whole lot of fascist ideology. Uh, and so, you look, you know, but they interviewed him. Okay, so they interviewed him and there were people that didn't like it, but he still got interviewed, so... So you don't think it matters that a bunch of ABC journalists would publicly comment, no doubt they privately commented as well, saying that it's inappropriate to interview this dude? Oh, look, I don't know. Um, they got in trouble when they interviewed that Muslim guy on Q&A, you know, had him ask a question on Q&A, and I thought that was, that was crossing a line that they shouldn't have crossed at the time you know, because the suggestion was that he had links to certain stuff or whatever. But, you know, sometimes they'll make risky decisions on their interviews. And I, you know, I trust them, you know, whoever's the producer of the show to, you know, make those decisions. And so they made the decision. Other people weren't happy about it. I think they've got a reason to not be happy about it. Steve Bannon is not a nice guy. Yeah, you don't like him. I know you don't He's like him. He's not a nice guy. <laughs> we don't want his ideas in Australia. Yeah, okay. This is why you like the ABC. I'm sorry, we do not want alt-right ideas in Australia. The right, I don't know what has happened to the right. The right are nothing like what they used to be. <laughs> they are not. They used to be about freedom. The left are nothing okay. like what they used to and be. And you can argue that too. That's fine. But the right, you know, that alt-right stuff, we don't need that here. We don't need it. And because part of the problem with all of this division, right? So what we're talking about is that all of this division between left and right and left and right and, you know, all of the fake news stuff and all of the, the crap and that's all bringing all of the trust level down and everything, it's emboldening more of that. It's emboldening people who are going to lead to more division and lead to more hate and lead to, you know, and so I'm just, we don't need him talking about stuff in Australia, but if someone wants to interview him, then I don't think he's been charged with any criminal offence or anything, so they can interview him. Other people can not like it. Yeah. So would you feel the same way about, like, the people on the left that are far left? Like, do you think, oh, you know, it would be good if we didn't give them platforms, but, oh, I guess we kind of have to? I want you to explain how, you know, because I think people like Steve Bannon are dangerous, you know. So how are people on the far left dangerous? I'd like an explanation about that. And, and, and I can see how you can think it's dangerous in how it might change, you know, like when it comes to identity politics and stuff and how it might change how we see ourselves as we, you know, mature as individuals and stuff. But uh, for the alt-right, I see that as dangerous towards violence, you know, within our communities. Even though he's never advocated violence. 
Whereas there are people on the left who have. Do I now have to go and research again so I can come back with some examples of stuff that he said? Because part three. Yeah, I don't want to have. Yeah, to do but that. like like Clementine Ford said, "Kill all men." That's actually promoting violence. And like, if she's on the ABC, no one cares. It's just like, of course, she's on the ABC. She actually promoted violence. Now, you know, she's she's come back and said, you know, that was a stupid thing yeah. to write, and of course it was a stupid thing to write. You should have realised that at the time. Um, like, it was written in satire, of course. Like, she wasn't literally meaning this person should go kill all men, but it's a dumb thing to write. And she gets away with it because she's a woman, and women are allowed to say kill all men. But, you know, if a man said kill all women, God. <laughs> Imagine if Steve Bannon said go home and beat your wife. But we. I mean, what do you think about what's going on right now in America, you know, with their Senate inquiry, the appointment of that judge? Have you been paying any attention? Kavanaugh. Yeah, Kavanaugh. Have you been paying much attention to that? Not a lot. I'm like, what the hell would I know? Well, I'm. So Trump, you know, had been accused by, what, 16 women of sexual assault sort of stuff over the time. And, And he's appointing a judge who's also been accused of a number of assaults and. And there's still this attitude of, well, that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And boys will be boys. You know, actually, Clementine Ford has a, her new books, Boys Will Be Boys. I, I don't want to get into the, the feminism and the identity politics. And, the, you know, that's a different podcast. And, and but We'll, I'm, I'm just we'll leave that stuff okay. to a degree. We'll go back to, like, you asked me about where is the danger on the left, that in your right. mind, Steve Bannon is actually a gateway drug to yeah. the far right yeah. where actual Nazis do want to yeah. bring back the gassing of Jews, essentially. Is that sort of what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, okay. if not the gassing of Jews, just, you know, violence in general towards people that aren't them. So, yeah. So I think the actual number of Nazis these days is tiny. Mm-hmm. Like, Steve Bannon does not re- represent... and Like, he is not a Nazi. He's not a neo-Nazi. He's not someone that... He's a quasi-Nazi. He's not a closet Nazi. Well, if he is, he's, you know, very closeted. He's never said anything remotely like, I want to kill Jews. So I think that's a, a sloppy label to apply to him because I don't think it's true. Now, does he, you know, like he's the dude that was the architect of the Muslim ban in the US. So he's definitely got some, I was going to say you could call that racist, but then Islam isn't a race. So I don't know what you call that. Um, but, you know, I can understand why people would see that and think it's racist. Mm-hmm. And it, it's certainly unhelpful. Like, you know, banning Muslim people is a stupid idea. But the idea that there's nothing on the left that's dangerous, I think, is naive of history. So I don't care whether you're left wing or right wing, but if you think that we should group people by whatever identity, whether it's, you know, they've got blue eyes, if they've got long hair or short hair, if they're gay, if they're black, if they're white, if they're, you know, whatever religion... If you are saying that the group identity is the thing that matters, I think you are dangerous. Like, I know in the same way that Steve Bannon isn't the dude that's going to go and start rounding people up, you're not the one that's going to come rounding people up, but there are scary people on your side of politics who do want to do that sort of stuff, who do want to come along and say, we're going to round up all the competent people because you guys are oppressors and you're oppressing all these poor victims and minorities and we're going to round you up and we're going to execute you. That's what happened in Soviet Russia. Um, It's not just hyperbole that literally happened. And so, yeah, like, I mean, you know, that's not Clementine Ford. That's not, you know, Yasmin Abdel Majid. Those people don't want to turn into Soviet Russia, but they are absolutely peddling dangerous ideas that I don't think they understand what they're doing and I don't think most of their followers understand what they're doing either. In the same way that people on the far right, I don't think you know, the vast majority of them don't want to see the Holocaust revisited, but there are some scary people on that side who probably do and you, you don't want to give that airspace. So that's the, that's the danger on the left. Okay. So if you don't want to give it airspace, you would say they shouldn't be interviewing Steve Bannon, but they shouldn't also be interviewing people on the far left then. Would that be... No, 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 no. No, I'm not saying that at all. Right. Sorry, airspace was probably a confusing term for right. me to use. Um, no, no, I, I absolutely think that Steve Bannon, yeah, whoever on the left, should absolutely be given airtime because, like I said, um, the best yeah, disinfectant sure. is sunlight. you got to get these views out there and let intelligent people have conversations and hope that the public 
can see through the stupid ideas and the dangerous ideas. Yeah, just thinking back to you don't like people, you know, being grouped together, you know, and I'm just going, I'm listening to Trump talk to the UN where they're laughing at him and he's saying that we reject globalism and we stand for patriotism. We are a patriotic nation, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm going, there's this real nationalist, you know, we talked about it a bit in the democracy episode. There's this real nationalist sort of bent at the moment and that is a thing of us and them, you know, and... I'm finding that sort of that sort of talk scary. I, th- this whole nationalist striving for that, and I think that the more conservative aspects, there's people in the right in our nation that that want to go that way, and I think that yep. I think that's pretty dangerous. Look, yeah. yeah. But anyway, all right. It's interesting. Like I, I think I agree with you on the nationalism stuff. Mm. Like I find it really odd that the same people that love Australia and love the nationalism and love the flag and all that sort of stuff, they'll post stuff on Facebook about this bald eagle and um, all this yay America stuff. And I'm like, well, which one is it? Do you love Australia or do you just love Australia and America? Like, it's just like, but I heard an interesting argument from Eric Weinstein recently who was talking about nationalism. Uh, We probably don't want to go into nationalism. (laughs) Well, we're just having a conversation. All right. Saying that nationalism, we should be encouraged by nationalism Because if you imagine a thousand years ago, like so a thousand years ago, everyone was living in their little tribes and the idea that I would care what happens to someone Mm. outside of my 150 people is just like impossible to get your head around. Like they're scary people that want to kill me. Move forward a thousand years to now and we have managed somehow to make it so that everyone in our country cares about everyone else in our country. That's amazing. Like people that you will never meet, you will never come across. It doesn't matter if they have the same political views as you or the same religion, whatever. If they were born in the same country, I care about you and you're one of my brothers. Uh Like That should give us confidence and encouragement that in another hundred years, maybe we can get to the place where we feel that way about all of humankind, that it's just, I don't give a crap what country you were born in. It doesn't matter. Well, we're not going to get there um, if we go backwards into going behind our closed doors and, and just serving the national interest, which I think even your brother quoted this to me once when I, I loved it. It was like, you know, national interest is another form of self-interest just on a grander scale. So, yeah, that idea of we are all humanity, you know, and having that global interest. But but there are there are problems with globalism as we talked about in the democracy thing that you know then it's harder if there's a global you know power or a multinational company or a rupert murdoch the problem (laughs) go on the problem with globalism isn't that it's that it's really good for the poorest people in the world but it's really bad for the poorest people in wealthy countries because all of a sudden you can get the poorest people in the world to make all the stuff and the low skilled people in wealthy countries just can't compete they can't get decent jobs and they're not going to move to China, are they? So what are they going to do? They can't find a job and they, they're not competent enough to upskill to become middle class. So what the hell are they meant to do? That's the problem with globalism. And that's where the idea of a uni- universal basic income mm. starts to look really attractive because you, you didn't get to choose your IQ. It's not like, well done, you've got a high IQ. It's just that you were born with it and there's not much you can do about it. It's not like you got to choose your level of self-discipline. You don't choose that. It's just some of us are really good at being disciplined and some of us are terrible at it. And it makes a massive difference to the outcome of your life. And so these people who have been pushed out of the workforce by globalism, they're not deplorables the way that Hillary Clinton talked about them. They're just unlucky. They're really freaking unlucky and they just had a bad roll of the dice genetically and, I don't know, born into the wrong place, I guess. Yeah, it's just bad luck and what do we want to do? We want to throw them under the bus? No, we've got to help them. And so they love Trump because they think Trump's going to, you know, they're wrong because what the hell would Trump know about? Mm. Uh, he's not going to bring back manufacturing. But they don't know that. They just see Trump saying all these things that they resonate with and they go, okay. We'll give him a shot. It's not like Clinton's going to do anything for us. Would have been handy if they'd had just facts delivered to them, <laughs> right? Instead of a whole lot of bullshit. Yeah. That they all. If that only they, they had up. the ABC, Chris. That's right. If only. <laughs> but that's part of why I think we'll go back into media. That's part of why I think it's really important that we have 
uh, a publicly funded national broadcast. It's part of why I think it's really important that we have, like one of the things you talked about was, you know, your idea of people putting value on something by spending the money on something, mm. right? You know, so you pay for, for content basically. And, and, you know, one of the things is, you know, the commercial media organizations, well, the ABC, they have a charter that they cannot charge the Australian public for, for content, right? That's part of their charter. And so the commercial stations, you know, Murdoch wants to charge people for online stuff, for sport, for, for news, for everything. He wants to charge people for everything. And it's okay that we want to put a value on, on content that's delivered to us. I like that idea, but I also think that that, if you have to pay for everything, that that does disadvantage those poorer people that what if they can't afford to, we need a free news, right? And we need a free news that's impartial, right? <laughs> because Murdoch will, with his money and his power and other, other people with vested interests, they're going to deliver the message that they want to deliver. They, they'll control the messages. They Even advertisers will control certain messages because they don't want something said about them or whatever. So we need, a publicly funded national broadcaster that's going to be able to do good investigative journalism that's in the public interest and it's not going to be cost effective it's going to cost us and it's that it does cost us it costs us as taxpayers and i think that it's right that it does and i think that we should keep doing it so that's one of the things that i guess i wanted to say like we do put a value on the abc we put a value on i think we need to put a value on all culture. We need to put, you know, a value on, on art, you know, art grants, music grants, movie grants, and news and TV and radio, all of these things. Because what's life if it's just the nuts and bolts? You know, you want this stuff that actually makes life richer, that's cultural. And I think that that's what they provide. And I, I'm worried that a lot of conservative sort of views don't want to spend money on a lot of those sorts of things. And I think it makes us all poorer if we don't. Yeah, so I don't really know what to respond to. Yeah, there was, wasn't, there was no there. question. Sorry, yeah, there was no question. So you do realise we do pay for the ABC. Yes. It's not free. I know. Yeah, we pay for it. Not now. You were like, But last night you were talking about privatising it, and I'm sort of like, well, even if we if we did, like, who would buy it and what would happen to it and who would control oh, it? Oh, who knows? Like the Guardian might buy it. Why not? Maybe the Fairfax would buy it. I don't know. But um. So it is being paid for. Yeah. The problem is that people are being forced to pay for it even though they don't consume it and they don't agree with what it's selling. It's like if I had to pay for Trump's election campaign, I'd be pissed because I hate the dude. It's not my job to pay for it. Raise your own bloody money. But, but Nick, I pay for your kids to go to school and I don't have any kids. <sighs> You're the one that wants free education, not me. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm just saying, I'm, you know, just because I don't consume... I'm on the school association at my school, yeah. and I was sitting in a meeting recently, and I'm going, we need to raise school fees. That's what we should do. All these stupid caramello koalas that we're selling for a dollar each to raise money so teachers can have resources, this is stupid. All us parents should just be, instead of doing that and wasting our time running around raising a dollar here and a dollar there, if all of us parents actually paid a decent amount... Yeah, I'm absolutely behind the idea of us paying more for education. Yeah. Good point, Chris. But what if um, you can't afford to pay that decent amount? You'll still have a right to an education, right? So you can, if, you, if the school fees suddenly mean that you can't afford to pay for it and it puts your whole life under pressure, it puts you at a disadvantage. And we value yeah. equality, you know, and that's what the idea of the left used to be was about equality and the right was about freedom and we agree on the idea of equality of opportunity, yeah. not equality of outcome. Yeah. Equality of opportunity. Sure. So, yes, in terms of education, mm. absolutely, yeah. We would not want anyone to go, oh, God, I can't afford to send my kid to grade three. Mm. No, that should be publicly funded. Of course it should be. But at the same time, we should also be expecting parents to put in as much as they can. So, you know, if you wanted to make it means-tested, I'd be fine with that. If you want to make it so that people that are richer pay a higher amount. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Mm. Yeah, I agree. So what's your point? Your point is that in one sense we don't need the ABC for any sort of equality of outcome or something? I'm saying that it's unfair to say to right-wing people you are forced to fund a left-wing media organisation even if you don't watch it. When it's not necessary. Like if it was necessary, then absolutely, but it's not. You've got The Guardian, you've got Fairfax. You've got every online 
news organization out there. You can find left wing content if that's what you want. I don't even want left wing content. <laughs> I want just facts. I don't want. So do I. I don't want opinion. I don't want. You know, like I do like reading opinion, but I want to know that that's what I'm doing when I'm doing it. You know, I I want a broadcaster that's down the middle that's going to give me the news that's going to give me the facts without fear or favor and just and just do that and because we need an organization to trust in that way and i think they are a better place to do that than and than anyone else they've been doing it for so so long they're part of the infrastructure here in australia and they're trying to still do that and what they make you know one little slip up here one little slip up there that's not significant you know yes you you pull them up by, so whatever you pull someone up by, you know, when they do something wrong and you give them a little whack and, and then they keep going. Yeah. So I agree with all of that, Chris. Right. Absolutely all of that I agree with. But so from there, I then say, I want the ABC to be centrist. I don't want it to have the left wing lean that it has. They need to have more actual conservative people. And if that was the case, then I would, yeah, then I want a public broadcaster. Absolutely. If it is down the center, Absolutely. I think they're already providing that service. It seems like the disagreement between you and me is how far left we think the ABC is. You think it's negligible, that it's hardly even worth mentioning that well, they're left wing. No, no, whereas I, I think I, they're I accept, pretty clearly left wing. I accept that there's left wing people in there, but I don't accept that what they do, what they present is biased. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what we disagree on. Yeah. So, I think both of those are true, that they are both dominated by left-wing people and also they produce left-wing content not like i'm not saying they're doing it deliberately i'm not saying that they're out to you know deliberately elect a green government no i don't think they're doing that i think they you know they're good journalists who yeah but we've got at the moment we have a right-wing government in power right you know and so part of the job of the abc is to hold them to account to investigate them to tackle them to in a sense, fight against them, you know? So it's like... No. Well, not necessarily fight against them, but to investigate them and to hold them to account, you know? So they hated, what, Emma Elberici because she was... Well, one thing she'd been talking about was challenging them on their idea of trickle-down economics. We know that that's bullshit. We know trickle-down economics is bullshit, and she's calling them out on that, and they hate her for that. She's doing her job, and that's what pisses me off. She's doing her job, and so... She had to do her job against Labor. If they were in power at the time, I would hope that she would do her job. Maybe you don't trust that she would, but I think she's doing what she's meant to be doing. So, And the people that want to stop that from happening, I'm, I'm like, well, why do they want to control it? What messages do they want to control? You know, And Murdoch wants to get rid of it and control it. Do we just want endless reality TV that's just numbing us and the opiate for the masses? You know, I... I want stuff that matters and that's going to challenge us. And I think that they, that's what they do. That's part of what they have to do. There's a reaction for you. <laughs> you want a reaction. There we go. Chris, Shay's asking, what is trickle-down economics? It's bullshit. Give us <laughs> an <what> economics. I... <laughs> <laughs> that you give more money to the rich, right? And then because they've got more money and because they run businesses and stuff, they will be able to employ more people. So you make, you get them massive tax breaks and everything so that they can make more money and then they will employ more people and it will trickle down to working class and lower class and stuff. And so then we've all got more money, but human beings like the banks have just been caught out. You know, it was announced that, you know, part of the problem with them was that there was greed that it's been called blatant greed. It's they had profits mattered over people. That's what their driving force was, that profits mattered over people and it was about greed. So this happens. So the people with lots of money don't it doesn't trickle down. It, like it might here and there, but it just as a concept, it doesn't work. People hoard their money. So for someone who cares about equality, <laughs> I don't see it working. Who do you think does more good in the world, the Australian taxpayer or Bill and Melinda Gates? When you say the Australian taxpayer, you're saying the Australian taxpayer, each one individually or as a whole? No, as a whole. <laughs> as a whole. Well, I don't know how yeah. much tax we pay in billions of dollars that goes towards social services and how much Bill and Melinda Gates spend in a lot of the programs that they run to help people all around the world. So I don't, I don't know who does more good, but I, the Australian taxpayer does a lot of good as a whole in the social services that we provide to people, but they do a lot of good as well. And they're very rich people. But yes, there are rich people and rich organizations that don't help 
people all around the world that just weren't as lucky as they were. And so you're of the opinion that most rich people are selfish and just keep that money for themselves and don't use that money to create what they see as a better world. I'm just stuck on the word most here and whether I agree or disagree with this question. There's certainly a sizable amount of rich people that, you know, they'll, they'll care for certain things and they'll care for their family and they'll care for them. Part of the conservative bent is about freedom and freedom for the individual and it's and it's very you know and, and there are a lot of really good aspects about about that there's some fantastic things about that but it can mean that you end up becoming very focused on the me you know or on just the small group of people around me and so yeah it, i i don't think that trickle down economics anyway works and i'm saying that's what she was calling them out on See, but this is the thing, like freedom that the right espoused and equality that the left espoused. They're great. Like I read an article today written by someone I know called Matt Garvin, which I thought was brilliant. He talked about the left and right and where it all came from. He started off talking about the fact that he was uh, sick of hearing about the extreme right and the radical left in that we're, we're a combination of both. Either of those things on their own don't work. Neither philosophy actually works. No, they need to function together. Yeah, so he, he, says, he says if you're living in a moderately stable society, it's because the dominant ideology is not capitalism or socialism, but an, an amalgam of both. Yeah, our problem, with, our problem with the division is that we just keep driving this wedge in our society and we're going one way or the other and there is a centre <laughs> that we need to come to. So we want our publicly funded broadcast to be centrist. Yep, we do. There we go. It's good that they are, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a pity they're not yeah I, I find it really confusing how sometimes you say they're left-wing and sometimes you say they're centrist i don't know what to argue against i'm sorry i'm not making it easy on you that way no uh, well done well done very clever <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't intentional um i guess i think what's more important to me is the fact that i believe that they do try and hold to impartiality the the problem when you say that is whether you mean to or not, it makes it sound like other news organisations aren't doing that. And I think every journalist is trying to do that. They might they, be trying All to of do... them are trying to be impartial. Yeah, but what if they've got someone at the top who says, I don't want you to do that story, I want you to kill that story and I want you to do this instead because this is in my interest. The ABC is meant to be fiercely independent and it doesn't have those vested interests stopping it from doing things that are in the public interest yep it gets sticky when you interview a steve bannon and it gets sticky when you have 41 percent that vote for the greens there's this difficult balancing act but we have to put aside this idea like you've said it <laughs> you've said it dude we have to put aside this idea of left and right you don't what? you don't see you well you don't see yourself as, as left wing or right wing you don't want to be beholden to just a left wing ideology or a right wing yeah, ideology yeah, yeah. you want to see every issue on its merit yep obviously that's what we want to do that's what everyone should want to do that's what the abc i would think would want to do and it's what sky news tries to do and it's what the guardian tries to do and it's what the australian tries to do <laughs> and and i don't trust that necessarily do you trust the Guardian? No, I see the Guardian as left wing, as pretty openly left wing. Yeah, but do you do you trust them? I, I well, I trust them in like, the sense. Do you distrust them in the same way that you distrust Sky News or the Australian? Well, this is the challenge to me then. So I distrust Sky News. I, I see some of their presenters, and you know, when you know when they bring on Blair Cottrell and have a good laugh and a joke and ha 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 ha, you know, and the and he's I, I've read John Safran's book, and he's all the way through that book, and he's a very interesting piece of work. Um, so I look at Sky News and I'm just, I just shake my head. I don't trust them. Uh, well, you know, I don't trust some of their presenters. As, as an organisation, I'm not going to write them off as an organisation, the people behind the scenes and stuff like that, you know, no, not necessarily at all. And The Guardian, well, they often say a lot of things that I agree with, <laughs> you know, so, so what do you want me to do? Like they say a lot of things that resonate with me. What I want you to do, Chris... I want yeah. you to acknowledge that I'm the only reason, <laughs> well, you kind of are, but I don't think you're acknowledging that the only reason you distrust the journalists at Sky News and The Australian is because they don't hold the same ideological view as you. 
whereas you do trust the journalists at the ABC and the Guardian, not because of any any real reason other than because you agree with them politically. It's tricky, man, because everything is political. Everything is tied to it. Like every for me, everything is spiritual. Everything is political. Everything is intertwined, and and it all matters. I don't know. I don't see the ABC making bipartisan type political statements. I see the Guardian doing that and me agreeing with a lot of what they'd say because it fits with my value system, you know, and it's hard because I, I don't know. What do you want me to say? Because <laughs> I'm like, I don't understand why you, why do you think it's okay for there, be, for there to be people in offshore detention? Why? Why we do you talked think? about that in our I know. refugee episode. I, I just think that it's, because it's morally bankrupt. Do you want to talk about refugees? I'm happy to. <laughs> Not really. I just know that, you know, like 20 years ago, we would never have done anything of the sort. And we have gone in this direction of left and right and the division in our society and, and you know, and everyone sort of peeling off into these. And I, this is just the problem that you keep raising with me is that I, I'm over on one side to a fair extent. But I still don't know what you want me to do about it because I'm still trying to judge things on their merit. I'm hoping that I'm not just going, oh, a Guardian article, I'm just going to read that and go, yes, that's exactly what I, you know, what I think. And and I'm just, oh, they've got a great point there. I'll just take that on board. I'm still trying to approach it with critical thinking. The fact that I'm accepting that they're a left wing, <laughs> I would hope that you would see that that would be me saying, when I'm going and reading that, I know that they're left wing. I know that they're biased. I'm going into reading something knowing that they're biased. But what they say still, not all the time, but generally fits with my value system. Yeah, but that's more, the problem. You, you want to be reading articles that don't fit with I your do. value system. That, I do. That make you go, oh, God, they're seeing things differently. What am I missing? Yeah. Yeah, instead of just going, oh, God, they're seeing things differently. They're assholes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, well, you'll do that at the start, yeah. but then, you know, every third article you'll find one statement that makes you think and go, oh, I hadn't thought of it like that. And then progressively, you'll start to see their views as humane and that they do actually have logical points of view and they're not just assholes. So, yeah, people on the right need to read left-wing media and people on the left need to read right-wing media. That's what I've been saying. I'm not saying everyone on the left has to start reading The Australian and watching Sky News and everyone on the right can just ca keep on doing what they're doing. No. I'm just wondering how much better would it be if we didn't have left wing and right wing media and we just had the facts. <laughs> that would be brilliant, but yeah, that's but we're not going to get it. Yeah. Like, so the ABC's charter is brilliant. Yeah. Like the idea that it's meant to be an impartial news organisation. That's brilliant because, like, that's not true of commercial organisations. Mm -hmm. They can do whatever they want. That's right. Yep. So the ideal behind the ABC is brilliant. And so that's why if they actually had some conservative journalists, yeah, the ABC could be perfect. They do. Uh, but they don't. They do. <laughs> okay, so they they're have, outnumbered. They have 30%. But they do. Yeah, but don't say that they don't. They're then. wildly outnumbered. Don't say they well, don't. Well, okay, sorry. They are wildly outnumbered by their green counterparts. Right. Which means they are not living up to their charter, which I wish they were. If they <laughs> were, then we wouldn't be having this argument. But you can't vet people on... You know what they vote for because you can't ask them for that yeah. when well, you employ them. But you can, as a board, try and ensure that where you're sourcing your people from, you know, they would have come up through different other media organizations. And some media organizations are on the left and some are on the right. They're probably at those organizations because they might share some of those views. So, yeah, you can, as a board, try and do things to ensure that it's more balanced. Absolutely. But the board. Some of the board members at the moment weren't doing the right thing. So, anyway. <laughs> no, they were not. Anyway, that's um, that's going to be dealt with and we'll move on. It's yep. been an interesting conversation. Mm. It went longer than it was meant to. Yeah, I thought this was just going to be like a half hour or something, Chris. <laughs> we can't help ourselves. That's why we enjoy these conversations, though, Chris. Anyway, thanks for joining us again. Yep, very well. Thank you. We're all in this together. If you've got ideas on stuff you'd like us to talk about on future ones, send them through. All right. See you around. Farewell, people. <laughs>